In this home theater builder episode, I'm talking about finishing touches for a theater space like cable routing, curtains, and softer accessories. So let's jump right in and talk about cable routing. I think cable routing is one of the really unique elements of my room. As I've talked about in the past, I converted this already finished space and I didn't want to tear into any major drywall to make a home theater room. That means I wasn't going to be routing cables to the projector or speaker positions inside the walls. I also didn't want visible cable routes all over the room, nor to go under the carpeting. I tend to tinker and change things pretty often as well, so I wanted a cable structure that was accessible for future tweaks. That pretty much left me with the general idea to surface mount, but in a way that accomplished my goals and requirements at the same time. What I conceived of was the idea of surface mounting cables in clean looking channels, however, doing it in a way that still remained accessible and was hidden. Enter the curtain skirts. I'll talk about how the curtains were actually made in a few minutes, but for the cable hiding effect, by mounting the curtains to cover the lower portions of the walls and the vertical portions where cables needed to go up and over things, I was able to use stick-on plastic channels just bought from Home Depot behind all the curtains. With the room layout and logistics, this could generally get me everywhere in the room I needed to go for the projector, the subwoofers, and all the speakers, even getting up and over the closet door behind me in the back of the room that's fully curtained over. The closet still remains accessible too if I need it, although I actually don't really use it for anything at the moment. With this method, it didn't matter that the routing channels were left white as they're hidden behind the black curtains. The only visible place in the room where you can see any cables is the little jump out from the upper rear wall to the back of the projector for its HDMI, Ethernet, and power. And also, I had to come from behind the rear wall full height curtain straight out left and right to reach the rear height speaker channels up high on their wall mount. I used some smaller stick-on Home Depot channels for this since it's only one little wire that needed to be routed, and I painted them black to match and blend in with the wall. You can see them if you look really hard, but it blends nicely, and again, this is the only visible cable routing structure in the room, very minimal. This method has worked excellently. I can access any channels directly and simply under the curtains without any hassle. Pretty soon, for example, I'll probably replace the current 18 gigabit per second HDMI fiber optic cable running from my rack to the projector with an HDMI 2.1 48 gigabit per second cable and doing so will be a cinch. The cable channels just snap right into themselves so access is a quick unsnap and then they kind of just fold right open. I didn't even bother with junctions as they aren't needed given everything is hidden behind the curtains and to date I've had no trouble at all with the adhesive and every channel has remained stuck on securely going on a few years now. So regarding the curtains themselves, curtains just evoke a home theater setting, and I knew I wanted some black velvet in the room, around the screen, and in the front of the space. This serves two major purposes. One, it just looks nice having the front room cubby of sorts with the floating screen fixed frame up there on the wall. With everything dark, the screen just hangs in the space. And two, extending the curtains down the sidewalls by a few feet really helps manage light reflections that go straight off the sides of the screen to nullify that light reflecting back into the seating position. Expanding the curtaining to hide the cable routing became a total bonus, and then also as a means to easily hide the closet door in the back and the long glass block window that runs along the upper sidewall. And yes, the curtains also provide some general soft surface in the room to help break up some audio reflections, but I think that's a minimal side effect of them compared to what the actual acoustic panels do in the space. I'll talk about acoustic panels in a dedicated future video because they're just so important, but I wouldn't recommend that you look to rely on curtains like mine for any kind of real effective sound control or tuning, unless you're doing some really heavy duty fabric. Our curtains are just a standard velvety material. We were going to DIY the curtains as my wife is quite crafty with a sewing machine, but after actually buying some fabric and getting started and realizing just how time consuming of a project it was going to be to sew it all and make all of it, relative to how busy she is managing many elements of our life and household, we pulled the plug on the DIY. So I went to a local printing shop and asked for a recommendation if they knew a local seamstress, and I found a craftswoman right here in our town that does custom jobs often for window curtains, but perfect for home theater too. She'd never actually made curtains for an application like a home theater before, so she found it a pretty neat project to do. We went over the details, she did all the dimensioning and the planning, and made the multiple curtain sections for the space. 
The curtains are attached to the walls first by putting black painted 2x4 lumber up on the wall screwed through into the studs. I then put sticky back velcro along the top front edge of the lumber. The seamstress sewed the opposing velcro strip onto the back side top of the curtains along with making the wavy pleated pattern that, that they have while they hang. The curtains then just stick velcro to velcro and this has worked great. Although within a few months some of the full height curtains did begin falling down. They were pulling the sticky velcro right off the wall. I'd come into the room and just find a section of curtain on the floor. An easy solution was to just nail the velcro strips in on the higher sections with a little nail every foot or so along the strip to secure it to the lumber. Nothing has fallen since doing that. Lastly, just to mention about the final soft touches to a room. As I've talked before, we did opt for a wide chase style couch sectional in here versus theater chairs for the comfort requests of the family. Given some of our viewers often like to lay down more than sit, and given we are in a basement, we keep a group of four oversized comfy pillows and a group of four handmade cushy blankets in the theater space all the time, ready to grab and use. The pillows just came from Target. My son actually picked them out, and he did a mix of fuzzy and not so fuzzy pillows. The blankets were made by hand in a black and dark purple colors by my crafty aunt, who's made a ton of these style of blankets for all kinds of friends and family. The result is that having the pillows and blankets permanently down here makes the space more comfortable and inviting, given the basement is often always cool and some family members cover up, even though it might be warm outside. Home Theater 101, if you want your family and your significant other to come enjoy the space with you, perhaps family members that are not so tech enthusiastic as you are, make decisions and do some things that are comfortable for them and invite them into the space. We also have the bean bags down in front of the couch. I didn't want to put a coffee table or such there as I didn't want it permanently in the way or affecting audio performance or video performance. So the bean bags are perfect. They're foot rests when people are sitting on the couch and they're also floor seating support when the kids might sit down on the floor. When my kids and their friends watch movies here, they often actually choose to sit down on the floor for whatever reason versus sitting actually on the couch. I'm getting too old for that myself. But the bean bags too were just another target purchase not expensive and easy to buy. For setting drinks down and other things like remotes, we opted for a very wide couch table butted up against the back of the couch. This keeps all this stuff behind the viewing and out of the way, but still within super easy and direct reach. I think it also reduces the risk of spills and such for setting drinks down or whatever else might be in front of us. The table was bought as a gift by my wife and kids and I believe it was bought at Ikea. It looks great and has a bunch of storage to keep things in the room that I might want to have in here, like device specific remotes and gaming accessories, but again, having the, that stuff not visible and hidden away in the room itself. It's just a quick walk around the couch to grab something, which is pretty much the only reason anyone has to go behind the couch in the space to begin with. So it's usually just me going back there, always being very careful not to knock one of those side surrounds off its stand. One last finishing touch worth mentioning is that I keep a Honeywell HEPA air purifier in the room too. I turn it on when the room is not in use and turn it off when we come down here to watch a movie. I don't want it running while watching content to eliminate that fan noise. We keep the theater room doors closed whenever we're not in the room, which of course is most of the time. So running the purifier on low helps keep dust and such blown into the room from the HVAC system from collecting on everything. And it helps just keep the space a little fresher overall. It was only about 200 bucks and I just bought it from Best Buy. Again, I think it's a good addition to the space as a basement home theater, a musty, dusty, closed up room isn't very inviting. I had been keeping it up though at the front of the room by the sidewall, but I think I'm actually going to move it to behind the couch next to the couch table and essentially hide it away. It's black and almost just looks like another piece of gear up there, but eh, it's a piece of industrial equipment in my theater and I don't really want to look at it anymore. So that's finishing and soft touches. Things like this really help to finalize the space, so don't overlook them in your planning. One extra thing I've long considered too is a movie poster over on the sidewall opposite the door where the only real blank space on the wall is. I did some research before and found a place selling non-reflective theater poster frames and my long-standing intent has been to pick up an original 1980s theatrical Return of the Jedi poster specifically for that space. Return of the Jedi captures the essence for me of so much related to the enjoyment and fondness of cinema and film. We'll see on that and rest assured if I do buy the poster in the frame someday I'll make a video about it. Let me know in the comments about any special finishing touches that you have in your space or that you consider key and valuable to your home theater experience. Thanks for watching. Please like and particularly subscribe. Channel response has been great and I want to keep it going. Thanks.